the proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you always, the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot accept because it neither sees nor knows him. But you know him because he remains with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live and you will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father and you are in me and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me. And whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and reveal myself to him. The Gospel of the Lord Our Gospel passage for this Sunday is taken from the Gospel of St. John. We have been reflecting on the theme of an enduring communion with Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. As I said earlier, we are already preparing to celebrate the solemnity of the ascension of Jesus. And so one of the concerns of the disciples and our concern is when he returns to the Father, will we be left alone? Is there something enduring in our communion with Jesus, our union with him, especially in the ascension? In the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, we saw how our fidelity to Christian mission, the proclamation of the word of Jesus and the person of Jesus as the Messiah is one way of remaining in communion with Him. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Through our missionary endeavors and zeal, we are in union with Jesus, the one sent by the Father. In the second reading, a beautiful passage from the first letter of Peter. Communion with Jesus, the risen one, who rises by the Spirit and shares that life in the Spirit with us, how can we maintain our communion with Him? He who wants us to be in communion with Him? First, by living a life that is faithful to the teachings of Jesus Christ. Secondly, being united with Him in His suffering. For if we live like Him, we will have to endure also the trials, the hostility, that he had undergone. And thirdly, Jesus in us is the source of hope, the reason that we proclaim to the world why we are hopeful in the midst of trials. So living Jesus, not only living in communion with him, but living Jesus in our lives, in our hearts, venerating him and making him the rule of my life, that is communion with him. Now the gospel. Jesus assures again the disciples before he left them, first of all through his death and later on through his ascension, that his communion with them and with us will never be broken. This is consoling. So communion with Jesus is not a product of our efforts. Let that be clear. We cannot maintain, we cannot sustain communion with Jesus by our sheer human efforts and desires. It is Jesus who will make that communion with us lasting. So let us be clear. 
that an enduring communion with Jesus is His gift to us. It is His desire, and He will do it. How will He do it? And what is our responsibility? First of all, He will do it by sending us the Spirit of Truth, who is our Advocate. Jesus promised He will not leave the disciples orphaned. He promised that they would never be alone. He will ask the Father to send to the disciples another advocate called the Spirit of Truth. So my dear brothers and sisters, Jesus has done His share. Even if it's physically, even if physically, He will not be present anymore to the disciples and to us the way He was before His death. It doesn't mean He is absent. His presence to us will be guaranteed by the new Advocate, the Holy Spirit, who is the life, the power, and the love of God given to us. Let us be open to the Holy Spirit. And Jesus calls the Holy Spirit the Spirit of Truth, who will lead us to the truth that Jesus had taught us. Here is one form of communion through the Spirit of Truth. The Spirit will remind us of the teachings of Jesus so that we will not be separated from the truths that Jesus had left to us. You know, there is a temptation for us to be Wow, fascinated with the different truths that the world present to us. We might be tempted to forget the truths of Jesus. And forgetting the teachings of Jesus, we will cut our communion with Him, even if He wants to maintain His communion with us. So Jesus offers to us one force, one vital force, so that we could remain in communion with Him by the Spirit of Truth that will remind us of His teachings and would help us understand always the teachings of Jesus. This is the first guarantee of communion with Him. So my dear brothers and sisters, are we open to the Spirit of Truth or do we close our eyes, our ears, our hearts to the teachings of Jesus? By so doing, we might be separating ourselves from Jesus. Let us not waste the gift of the Holy Spirit sent by Jesus and the Father to us. Truth, the truth of Jesus. Let us be united with Him in the truths that He taught us. And secondly, Jesus tells us that one mark of our communion with Him is not only fidelity to the truth that He taught us, thanks to the Holy Spirit that will remind us, the other sign of His communion with us and our communion with Him is if we love as He has commanded us. Obedience to His commandments. And what are the commandments of Jesus? Generous love. Love the Father above all. And love your neighbor as yourself. That is a sign, a living sign of our communion with Jesus. Active love. So we have a beautiful combination. Clinging to the truth and actively loving as Jesus loved. All of these guaranteed by the Holy Spirit. So the readings of today alert us to the gift of communion that Jesus offers, but we have a responsibility. Will we accept communion with Him through mission, 
through a lifestyle that is in harmony with his life, sharing in his suffering, making him the source of our hope, fidelity to his teaching, and loving as he commanded us to love. These are ways by which we can remain faithful to Jesus, communion with him, he living in us and we living in him. This is not sentimentalism. This is very concrete in mission, in lifestyle, in truth, and in active, generous love. Let us keep our communion with Jesus. I once was invited to a, an informal sharing of alumni of my alma mater. You know. And so it was, a, it was a refreshing gathering of some graduates of the Ateneo from different uh, batches. I was very much impressed by the sharing of one woman who said in tears, huh? she had to make a difficult choice at that moment. She needed all the financial help that her business could give her because her children are now all entering college and all of those. No, like any parent who wanted to uh, give his or her children the best, this woman, of course, wanted something better no? for her children. And she knew that her business could give her that. But then there was also the calling to continue serving in mission. So there was a choice to leave an NGO that she loved very much and or to shift to another career. Both of them quite noble. I don't know where her, her final decision was, what her the final decision was. But what caught my imagination was one of her words. She said, oh, why did our alma mater teach us to be a person for others the way Jesus was? She said, this is a cross that I'm carrying. Why did our university teach us that? So difficult to deny it. For me, no, that was a great affirmation. Jesus is present. Jesus is united with her. And she is struggling to be in communion with Jesus. The word has been exposed. Let us now fulfill it.